friends, greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton. The, the videos made over the last two weeks were prepared by a team led by Lloyd Walker. And I just want to say how wonderful they were and to extend to the team a, a hearty word of thanks. And also to encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunity to watch them, they're great videos and they have something profound to say. Who could have imagined a year ago that the world would be gripped as it is now by the threat caused by COVID-19? And as we travel through this very rocky and difficult time with a sense of, of concern about what the future might bring, I've been thinking about what a wonderful gift prayer is. The opportunity to open oneself to the divine, to listen for God, as well as to share with God. So as we begin this service, let's pray. Loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, even in these days of COVID-19, we have so much for which we are thankful. The gift of your very presence in the midst of our lives, which extends even to the darkest places. The gift of prayer, the gift of others who share the journey and share the load of living with us. The gift of the church, the community of faith, while scattered still very much one in Christ. The gift of the change of seasons, the sign of spring around us. To you gracious God who raised up Moses to liberate the people from Egypt and who in Christ offers liberation from sin and resurrection life. We praise you. Compassionate God, you know us better than we know ourselves. You know that at times our actions and words have not reflected the calling we have in Christ. And perhaps motivated by fear, we have not loved you or even our neighbours or even ourselves with the love of Christ. Assure us that you love us for who we are and that in Christ there is mercy and grace in abundance true forgiveness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to own up to the reality of our living and open us to renewal and redirection where it is needed. Help us to be open to your healing and hope. Assure us that even in the most difficult of times, perhaps when we feel most alone and most anxious, you are there sharing in all we are experiencing. And we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Over the next two or three weeks, we will be hearing readings from the book of Exodus, the grand sweeping story in the Hebrew scriptures about the liberation of the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. Well, you might ask, well, what has this got to do with our current situation? How does the story about events some 3,000 or more years ago help us today in this time of the pandemic? Well, as you would expect me to say, I think it has loads to say to us. At one level, this is an epic story, absolute grist for the mill for the Hollywood movie producer. Ever heard of films with titles like The Ten Commandments or The Prince of Egypt? But on another level, there is much in the story of Exodus that intersects with everyday life. The key protagonists confront us with the way we humans respond to difficult situations. And then, of course, there is a central character in the story. And no, no, I don't mean the Prince of Egypt, Moses. No, I mean God, the God of Israel, the very same God that we encounter in Jesus. Listen now to some excerpts from the opening two chapters of the book of Exodus. Perhaps get your Bible out and read the whole of the chapters. Now chances are you're quite familiar with this story, but listen hard. Look out for the surprises, the elements of the story that you hadn't noticed before. And by the way, this exercise isn't just for adults. Whatever age you are, whether you're very young or very old, why don't you join in? Perhaps you might like to stop the video after you've heard the two readings read 
and talk about or talk or think about if you're by yourself what are the sort of things that are emerge for you from this story here are a few points to ponder take note of what is driving the actions of Pharaoh the leader of the most powerful nation in the world at that particular time and notice who are the heroes in the reading and take some time also to notice what is God's role in this particular passage. The Bible reading today is from Exodus chapter 1 verses 8 to 22 and then chapter 2 verses 1 to 8 and it's from the Message Translation. The people of Israel become slaves. A new king came to power in Egypt who didn't know Joseph. He spoke to his people in alarm. There are way too many of these Israelites for us to handle. We've got to do something. Let's devise a plan to contain them. Lest if there's a war, they should join our enemies or just walk off and leave us. So they organized them into work gangs and put them into hard labor under gang foremen. They built the storage cities of Pithon and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the harder the Egyptians worked them, the more children the Israelites had. Children everywhere. The Egyptians got so they couldn't stand the Israelites and treated them worse than ever, crushing them with slave labour. They made them miserable with hard labour, making bricks and mortar and backbreaking work in the fields. They piled on the work, crushing them under the cruel workload. The king of Egypt had a talk to two Hebrew midwives. One was named Shifra and the other Hua. And he said, when you deliver the Hebrew women, look at the sex of the baby. If it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. But the midwives had far too much respect for God and didn't do what the king of Egypt ordered. They let the boy babies live. The king of Egypt called in the midwives. Why didn't you obey my orders? You've let those babies live. And the midwives answered Pharaoh, the Hebrew women aren't like Egyptian women. They're vigorous. Before the midwives can get there, they've already had the baby. God was pleased with the midwives. The people continued to increase in number, a very strong people. And because the midwives honored God and God gave them families of their own. So Pharaoh issued a general order to all his people. Every boy baby that is born, drown him in the Nile. But let the girls live. A man from the family of Levi married a Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and had a son. She saw there was something special about him and hid him. She hid him for three months. And when she couldn't hide him any longer, she got a little basket boat made of papyrus, waterproofed it with tar and pitch, and placed the child in it. Then she set it afloat in the reeds at the edge of the Nile. The baby's older sister found herself a vantage point a little way off and watched to see what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the Nile to bathe. Her maidens strolled on the bank. She saw the basket boat floating in the reeds and sent her maid to get it. She opened it and saw the child, a baby, crying. Her heart went out to him, and she said, This must be one of the Hebrew babies. Then his sister was before her. Do you want me to go and get a nursing mother from the Hebrews, so she can nurse the baby for you? Pharaoh's daughter said, Yes, go. The girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter told her, Take this baby and nurse him for me. I'll pay you. 
the woman took the child and nursed him. After the child was weaned, she presented him to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her son. She named him Moses, which means pulled out, saying, I pulled him out of the water. Well, how did you go? For a start, what did you make of Pharaoh? Wasn't he being driven by fear, misplaced fear? Fear that somehow the number of Israelites in his nation was going to result in him losing his throne? A misplaced fear that led him to engage in deception, violence and oppression, and even to sanction murder. And did you notice that Pharaoh is not given a name? in the text. Now this is obviously a problem for historians as they try to work out in the reign of which Pharaoh these events took place. But there's also a message here. There have been so many other Pharaohs throughout history, Pharaoh types, leaders with many different names who out of fear, just like the Pharaoh in the Exodus story, have caused suffering and pain and worse. And who did you think were the heroes in the story? Surely the heroes are the women in this story, and there are quite a number of them. There are the named Hebrew midwives, Shipra and Puah. I probably mispronounced their names, but uh, there you go. Who ref they refused to be agents of death because they respected God above Pharaoh. God's way guided their brave and life-giving actions. And then there are the women in Moses' own family, his mother and his sister, who went to great lengths to protect Moses from death, even engaging in this very risky exercise of placing him in a basket and then placing that basket in the Nile. And then there's, of all people, the very unexpected hero in Pharaoh's daughter, who, even though she knew this to be a hero, to be a Hebrew child, took pity on Moses and cared for him. All of these women are on the side of life and against the brutal ways of Pharaoh. They save lives and indeed pave the way for the liberation of the people of Israel through the care of this young child, Moses. And then what about God? Where is God in this? Is not God particularly with the oppressed people of Israel? Is not God working through the women in this story? All right, so what about the connections with us today? How do we connect that story from 3,000 years ago with our situation? Well, I think there's something here about the to be said about the deadly impact of allowing misplaced fears to drive decisions. And yes, today we can see some obvious pharaoh types in the world around us. But what about you and me? Surely the text challenges us to reflect on our own motives and actions. Are we allowing misplaced fears to drive some of our decisions and then perhaps thus hurting people? And I think the story says something to us about where God is in our current situation. We are reminded through the events of Exodus that God is a God who has a particular concern for the broken, the oppressed, those who have been damaged by life, those who are on the margin. And that's true today as much as it was with the Israel, Israelite people way back then. And so God is with all of those who were hurting in this time, who were suffering, who were poor, who were broken, who were in need. And with us when we're in that situation. And the story also affirms the fact strongly that God works through unexpected people. Now, in our time, you immediately think of uh, perhaps people who are volunteering to respond to some of the, the, the situations that we're in at the moment. So what connections do we make with our lives? 
how does this story from these events from 3,000 years ago connect with us today? Well, there's something here about the deadly impact of allowing misplaced fears to drive decisions. And yes, we can today see some obvious pharaoh types when we look around the world around us. But what about you and me? Surely the text challenges us to reflect on our own motives and actions. Are we allowing misplaced fears to drive some of our decisions and perhaps in the process hurting others? And I think when we look at this text and we think about the story of the people of Israel and the Exodus, these events remind us that as God was present in that situation, God is present here today. As God in that time was concerned for the people of Israel, today God is concerned and has a particular concern for the broken, the oppressed, those who have been damaged by life, those today who are marginalised and perhaps cannot get access to health care. And also, when we look at this text and we think about the people within it, we realise that just as God worked through those women way back then in that situation to bring about liberation for the people of Israel, so God works through unexpected people today. Perhaps, perhaps not just the people who are up front offering care, but perhaps through that person down the street who, um, who says, if you ask them, well, I haven't done anything much, but is the one who brings some light and hope to others, who drops in some cookies to people up and down the street and in the process offers some hope, offers some life. God's ways so often unfold through the vulnerable and the fragile. Through everyday people, God works. People like you and me. People doing everyday things that reflect the way of God. In the story of Exodus, the care of one child, Moses, brings about the possibility of the liberation of the people of Israel. From this, the care of one child, so much blossoms, God is able to act. And in our time, through small actions, God can do amazing things. How does that song of Paul Kelly and Ken for Carmody go? From little things, big things grow. Our prayer of intercession is a prayer that comes to us from resources prepared through the World Council of Churches and has been written by Archbishop Dr. Antje Jacqueline the from the Church of Sweden. I'm sorry, I've probably completely mashed up the name there, but this is a beautiful prayer that comes to us from the Swedish Church. Let's pray. O loving God of life, God of compassion, as crisis is shaking our world, we turn to you with all our worries. For our loved ones, for our societies, for jobs and economies. For how the most vulnerable among us will be affected. Transform uncertainty and fear into love and care. Give us courage, wisdom and consolation. Trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the sick and those who are caring for them, for the researchers who are working to find medicine and vaccine, for those who must take difficult decisions that affect many, for international cooperation in the service of justice and peace, for spiritual leadership that is faithful to your will. In your mercy, help us to hold on to what is right, true and beautiful through Jesus Christ, whom we have come to know as our Saviour and Healer. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Here again the wonderful words of Desmond Tutu, words of real hope, words for our time. Go in peace, and remember goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death, victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Amen. And receive a blessing in terms of words that uh, are attributed to Aaron, the brother of Moses. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.